Chivalry is alive and well in the Kingdom of Eldermere, known to us mundanes as Ontario. One of 19 kingdoms in the known world of the Society of Creative Anachronism. Where royalty rules, battles rage, and knights fight for the hand of fair ladies. Welcome to Escapes with Nigel. I'm Nigel Napier Andrews, and nearly 50 years after it all started in California, here we are in a forest somewhere in Ontario, where a medieval wedding feast is just one of the delights that await us. But first, I've got to change into something more appropriate. I'm here in the middle of a medieval tournament with Duchess Adriel. Duchess, how did you get to be such an exalted level in the society? Uh, largely in part due to the strength of my husband's arms. Uh, he has won crown tournament twice. So he's, we have both sat thrown twice as king and queen, and as a result, we've become a duke and duchess. When you join the organization, everybody's assumed to be kind of a lord and lady and should be treated that way. But you, we have an award structure within the SCA that your first award is what's called an award of arms, at which point in time you may use the title lord or lady. We have what are called grant level awards, which is when you've developed a bit more proficiency in various areas where you are being, then you would style yourself an honorable lord or lady. Our kings and queens are chosen every, approximately every six months. We have a tournament. Um, and the best fighter who wins the day is, is given the privilege of crowning his consort as princess or prince. Everything seems to be incredibly authentic. How do you go about putting your costumes together? I sew everything I wear myself. Uh, I do my own leather, leather work and, and most of what I have on I've made myself. There are, because our club is so big now and worldwide, there are people who make their living selling things to uh, the reenactment community, from the leather work to the metal work to the coronets, the jewelry accessories. The guys in the background who are fighting for their lives, I guess, wearing, wearing fantastic armor and, and padding as well, who makes all that stuff? Uh, most of what they're wearing they've made themselves. Uh, the hardest part to make yourself is the helmet. We do have very strict armor requirements. Uh, it has to be made out of a certain gauge of material uh, or equivalent. So there are master armorers throughout the world where people buy their helmets and such from. But we do have people within Ontario who make the, the equipment. Now you've been in this for quite a while. How long ago did this all start and where did it start? The SCA started in 1966 in Berkeley, California, where a group of people had a backyard party. They had so much fun that they decided to do it again and again and it caught on and has since spread worldwide. We now have 19 kingdoms. We have uh, groups in every uh, continent of the world, uh, all over North America, Sweden, England, Finland, Australia. Today's event is great fun, of course, but it's relatively small but I understand that you have some very large events and that you invite the public to those events. Yeah, all our events are open to the public. Uh, we only restriction is that people make some attempt at pre-1600 clothing, um, but we do have events that are large, as large as 12,000 people. Uh, every August, and we have a, an event called the Penzik War, where there will be 12,000 people who come from all over the world, and at that point in time, you will see everybody from um, barbarian personas up through to the high Middle Ages, all the way through to 1600s. So you don't mind people mixing up the different era? No, that's where a lot of the anachronism comes in. And right, you'll you'll have see. somebody who's a Celt interacting with a tutor. So. Which they wouldn't have done in no, ancient times. No. Technically, we're 600 to 1600. What era do you come I from? I do 14th century, so the 1300s. Uh, I do 1400s exclusively. It's a, a time where there's a lot of romance and chivalry with the stories kids read about, so that's what appealed to me about it. And also the clothing for me feels like clothing as opposed to a costume. I'm wearing a splendid outfit that has been lent to me by our host, and I don't even know what period I am, so perhaps you could help me there. It's somewhat of a generic tunic that would cover a broad range of periods, probably from about 800 to 1200, Norman or Celtic, or it's very flexible. So, so you and I would have actually never met? No. Because I'm 200 years before you even, yes. even were born. So uh, I'm 200 years older than you at this point. <laughs> Watching those guys fight, I'm beginning to feel it. They really whack away at each other, don't they? We do, um, but it, like any sport, we learn to judge what is a good blow. Right. Uh, our field activities are based on chivalry, so you are expected to learn what is and isn't a good blow and to use honor to take the blows. 
just walk me through some of the fantastic things that we can see going on around us today. Well, behind us we have the Armoured Combat, which is obviously one of the flashier and uh, more well-seen items that we do. We also do archery, so we have people who make their own arrows, their own bows. We have thrown weapons, uh, which is throwing knives and axes and javelins. Um, those are many of the martial activities. As well as that, we have a great deal of arts and science activities, from sewing to costuming, weaving, metalwork, leatherwork, armor making, making bows and arrows, dancing, music, calligraphy and illumination, cooking. If they did it in the Middle Ages, there's somebody in our organization who does it. I don't think I fancy dressing up in a armor in any way. I'd have to uh, <laughs> get some training before I go yes. whacking around yes. on the field. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Today's meeting has been organized by Lord Connell, who's won his high rank with some fierce fighting. Oh, there you are. Well, that's much better. Now, do you think you fought fiercely enough today to win the hand of the fair maiden, Johanna? I, I think I did. I think I did. I took her hand today, yes. Excellent. And do you think that you're going to go on forward in wedded bliss after this? Yes, I very much hope so. Lord Connell, how did you get started in this? Uh, history. I, I love history. Um, I, I love the whole part of it. And being part of this group, it's not only just the fighting. Um, you spend a lot of time learning about silversmithing. You can learn about cooking. You can learn about making garb. Uh, just about anything to do with what needed to be done back then, you can learn from people in here. How did you get to such a high office in the society? Um, a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. You have to come out and you have to fight regularly. You have to train. We train at least once a week um, and go to all the battles that are around the country, Canada, in the States and Canada. Um, so it's, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And it's a lot of friends you meet. A lot of friends. And no matter where you go, you're going to meet friends. We're going to be doing a broken field battle. We have a bridge. We have two turrets. The objective is to hold three points and be the last team standing. You guys take the house. Got it. Is that Wait, if they need more, you float out. All right. I'm <clears throat> Now tell me about the helmet, because this is a pretty fearsome helmet, and I, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite so beautiful as that. Uh, this helmet is made by a, a friend of mine uh, who, uh, named Bacalo out of Florida. Um, it was custom made for me uh, to do with the wolf's face, to do with my heraldry and my family coat of arms. Um, we also have the uh, wolves, which are engraved in the headband uh, to signify running with the wolves, which is a term we use up here when we're going to battle with brothers together. Try it. My goodness, that is heavy. I mean, that is actually really heavy. That's got to weigh about, what, 15, 20 pounds? Yes, about 20 pounds. 20 yeah. pounds, and you wear that on your head and you yes. fight all day? Yes. How on earth do you do it? I mean, that must be a huge amount of training. Part of training, yeah. Mm -hmm. You get easier with training with it, yeah. Now, now, what were you doing, actually? You were fighting with, uh, with simulated swords. Yes. Uh, we use a, a wood called rattan uh, because it doesn't snap like a hardwood, but it's very heavy and it's a solid piece of wood. Um, and we'll do it in shapes of like a sword or a pole arm or a spear or an axe. And uh, yeah, we'll heat each other with them. Lord Connell, you've won the hand of the Lady Joanna, but I know you have more battles to fight, so I'm gonna let you go back and fight, and we'll see you later on at the Medieval Feast. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks. Clear down range, clear behind, throw when ready. Can you throw it? And throw it. And stand still and wait till you hear me say retreat. We're here at the axe throwing range with Baroness Christiana and she's going to show me all about it. And I guess the first thing we've got to talk about is safety. Absolutely. The first thing we do is we have to make sure we have closed toed shoes. And I have splendid med medieval boots borrowed from some a very lord. regal person. A yes, lord. absolutely. A lord let you his shoes so you may throw axes. Excellent. Well done. Um, Thank you. The next thing we check mm -hmm. for, obviously, in the axes, is if the wood is nice and smooth mm -hmm. so you don't get any splinters. Okay. And that the blade is fine, there's no chips taken out of right. it. The one thing we do know is oh, this one's stuck on really tight is the axe heads do come off. Okay. Obviously, again, it's a safety issue. Right. Axes do bounce back from the targets because there might be a knot in the target. 
and axes do bounce back. Right, and what do we call the targets? The targets are called butts. Are they? They have so to be. So I'm throwing an axe at a butt. Yes, you are. Okay, well, we, I'm we always to enjoy that. that. Yes. So they have to be 16 inches across. Okay. And we do sometimes paint colors on them, like mm -hmm. the red, the blue, and the white. Then they are points, um, just like on an archery target. So I put my toe on the 10 foot line yep. here. I eye the target, the butt. Yep. I, can I line it up like that? Is Absolutely. that a good idea? Absolutely. Yep. So I line it up like that, and I put it on my shoulder. Yep. And, and then, then release. And then I'm just going to go. Absolutely. I think uh, I've got it. I think you have. OK, let's do this for real. Marshall, are we ready? Clear down range. Clear behind. Throw in ready. OK, I'm a bit nervous, actually. You'll be fine. Oh. Missed completely. That's OK. Yeah. Oh, right over the top! Yes! Yay! Oh. Third time lucky, wasn't lucky. But on to the archery. Time to learn how to shoot at ye old archery range. Baron Percival, I presume. Lord Nigel, please, come forward. Good to see Sire. you on this day. You wish to learn archery? I do. Well, have you ever shot before? Not with one of those. Okay, well, no. we, will, we will assume that you're going to start from the bare beginnings. Right. We will teach you the basics of archery. So, okay. a bow, please. Thank you. Hold the bow in the hand that you would normally okay. shoot with. And I have been lent this interesting little device. To I protect pr your fingers. Okay, good. Okay, a finger well, I want guard, my, yes. I want my fingers protected, now, absolutely. Now, the first thing you want to remember yes. is your right hand is not going to move once you pull your string back. So you're going to find yourself a comfortable spot right. somewhere touching your face right. with your hand. So pull your string back and find that comfortable spot. Okay, so that hand is always going to go there whenever you are shooting. Right. You are now going to aim okay. using this hand only. Okay, like that? Yes. Once you have an arrow, you will use the tip of your arrow to right. aim at the target. Right. Find a spot on the target okay. with the tip of your arrow. Once you're comfortable, you let your string go. Right, but not when there's no arrow in the in Exactly, the no, okay, no never when there's That's no arrow. That's quite hard, isn't it? Yes. The Ready to move on to the arrows? You're going to start with the arrow on the left side of your bow. Okay. You're going to put that just below that little brass button. Pull it back, you'll hear it click. Right. Oh yes, it did. Now, remembering what I taught you, pull it back till you find your comfy spot. I shall, okay, fingers. Pull it back to my chin. And when you're comfortable, yes. you let the arrow go. Just let it roll off your fingers. That's, We're on the target. That is one point. I've scored. You have scored one point. Baron Percival, you are an absolutely brilliant instructor, I must say. And I feel very privileged, and I do thank you for letting me use your personal arrows. You're most welcome. Although I do say that purple clashes fingers. with my blue and red tunic. All right, this is the okay, serious Back one. to your spot. Find that spot. Yes. When you're comfortable, let it roll off your fingers. The battles have been won. Contest decided. The Lord Connell and Lady Joanna joined in wedded bliss. I think it's time for the feast. Thank you for joining me today for the Society of Creative Anachronisms Fair and Feast, one of the great events organized by the Kingdom of Eldermere, held throughout the summer across Ontario. For more information, check out their websites, and don't forget to visit my website for all sorts of information about the show. We'll see you next time on Escapes with Nigel. Ladies and gentlemen, a toast to Lord Connell and Lady Joanna. What's up?